Hey everybody, this is Matt and we're at Texas Toast Guitars. Thanks for watching. So my friend Gary brings in this adventurer guitar that we made for him. It's a fabric top and back. And he, um, he's been telling me that there's a little bit of buzzing going on. And you know, some of that is because of the fluorescent lights in here, but I've got it turned down to, I've got plugged into my shop amp and it's really loud. It's set pretty loud. It's also set pretty clean. So what happens is as long as you're touching it, just like most electric guitars, it's it's fine. But again, the amp's up pretty loud. I don't know if you can hear that buzz. Here, listen, I'm gonna shut up for a second. You hear that? It's, it's a little more, the, the guitar's gonna start feeding back here in a second. But there's a little bit of a buzz that's present when you're not touching something metal on the guitar. Um, and Gary wants to see if we can make some of that go away. So what I told him we would do is shield the cavity. So I thought you guys might like to see how we do that. Um, like I say, the amp set really loud. Um, we're going to shield the cavities and then when we, uh, we come back and test it again, we'll see if we can hear a difference. And you might or you might not be able to hear a difference on YouTube, but We'll see. Um, so enough with the bullshit talk, let's get started. Not everybody knows about these cool tools, but dig this. It gets the jack or the, the switch dealy thing undealied. Oh, you have to go the right way though. So it tightens or loosens. Okay guys, I've removed all the, the stuff here and I've masked off the holes for the switch and the three um, volume, volume, and tone. And now we're going to get started on actual shielding itself. Now, you might be wondering some of the things that I'm doing here, like why did I mask off the back and why am I taping things to this masking? Well, I wanna get all the controls out of the cavities and I don't want them to be bashing and scratching the guitar when I do so. You also might be wondering about this humongous cavity here. Um, we had to figure out a way to get the switch to, the, the wires from the switch to go from the pickup uh, to the, the other control cavity without using a pick guard for the Explorer. And this mahogany was crazy heavy, so we did a little weight relieving and, uh, and, and wire routing, and eh, it worked okay. So anyway, um, we're, gonna, we're gonna be shielding all of this stuff with shielding paint this stuff right here it works pretty well it's water-based so it doesn't stink like crazy and then we're going to shield the covers with some ordinary um foil tape that you can buy at your big box hardware store but let's go ahead and start by um putting the shielding paint inside both these cavities here and uh, then we'll get started on the cavities all right let's do it Okay, now we are going to turn our attention to these covers and putting something metallic uh, or conductive, 
for shielding on these. Now, I use this stuff uh, because it's really, really cheap. Now, remember, guys, you can use that copper stuff and you can make sure that, you know, you can use copper and then solder lines together and have all that great stuff. But do you really need tier one uh, uh, insulation on your guitar? It's not like you're a helicopter pilot and people are shooting rockets at you. Um, this will work. Now, having said that, if you want to use the more expensive copper sheets, I've got some of that too and I use it if people want. But for what we're doing, this works great. Now, you can get this stuff to uh, be conductive from one piece to the other by scratching it. Uh, I'll show you that here on the, on the bigger one. But on this guy here, we're just gonna plop it on there and then it, it'll be fine. Um, on this larger piece here, we'll actually have to scratch it together to make it uh, be one uh, uniform piece of conductive material. But this stuff works and it's really cheap and it's super, super available. Um, now you can't solder to it with regular, you know, the regular solder that you can use with um, the copper stuff. And if you want to use the copper stuff, please be my guest. But again, um, uh, to me, it's a whole lot like water skiing behind an aircraft carrier. You can, but maybe you can, but that sure seems like a hell of a lot of boat to do, to do, uh, you know, water sports. So um, this, this is going to be just fine with this tape here. And um, that's what I use. If you don't like it, you should absolutely use something else. So let's get started. I gotta have perfectly shielded stuff with all copper or I can't play. Oh. My rock and roll lifestyle <laughs> My rock and roll lifestyle. <laughs> Okay guys, I got my multimeter out and it's set to, uh, to find continuity between two things. So look, if I put one of these probes on this side, look at that, it actually is working, kind of. I didn't think it would do that, but here we are. I'm gonna go ahead and call that good. Sometimes you can scratch from one side to the other from one piece to the other, and, uh, and that will make a path. But we didn't even have to in this case, so I guess this tape is better than I thought. Okay, everybody, it's been a couple of days, and the reason it's been a couple of days is we had to do a couple of coats of the shielding paint, and we had to let it all dry. Uh, the reason we had to let it dry should be obvious, but the reason we had to put a couple of coats on there is so that you uh, have a path from one point of the shielding paint to another. So um, here I got my I got my multimeter here that's testing uh, continuity between two of the same things, and it's doing it audibly, so I don't have to look at the, the machine. So here I've got a stick that I that I swirl and um, uh, mix the shielding paint with. You will notice that it has is there's a path between one thing to the next. Now so dig this in my shielding cavity. If I put one of the probes here and one here, I get that signal that is refreshing and lets me know that I'm doing it right. So then I wanna make sure that my pieces are grounded to the, the, the cavities that have been shielded. And of course now it doesn't wanna do it. So there we go. So now I've got my, my piece here and my grounding lug on this switch and it all goes beep, 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 beep. We've attached the lug of the, ground, the, of the switch here to this uh, ground wire here, like it ought to be. Um, 
And because this switch is attached or is ground or shielded or grounded or attached or conducting to the, um, hold on, to this cavity here, it should also be conducting to this cavity here, right? It's easier to do it than it is to explain it. Okay, so we got everything back together. Hopefully this should take care of it. So it's all we got to do now is put the covers back on, which again are shielded and uh, have metal cover or metal shielding tape on them. And it should make this great big box that is what what are we what are we calling it, Chris? An electromagnetic shield. It's like some sort of X-Man shit or something. So we should be able to put all this stuff back together and be Good to go. It's a Faraday cage. A Faraday cage. That's what they called it in a book. Okay, I'm going to the fair today, and I'm going to be in the cage. I think that's supposed to protect you from lightning strikes in the cars, too. Le protect you from lightning strikes in the cars, yep. Mrs. Toast said. All right, let's put all this shit back together and be done with this project. Okay, everything is back together with the exception of the knobs, and I didn't put those on there because, well, I just forgot. But it's hooked up to the amp, and it's set really, really loud. <laughs> So it should be buzzing like a mother bear as soon as I take my hand off the strings. And it's not. So I think we have achieved something decent with this shielding for Gary. Chris is grimacing in the back because it's unbelievably loud and it's hitting him right in the face. So um, guys, if you have any questions about what we did in this video, please leave them in the comment section below. I can't imagine, I can't even begin to imagine the number of comments like, you did it wrong, you should have used this. I welcome those two because, um, well, why not? But here's what happened and here's what we did and this is the results that we got. So if I did it wrong, please let me know why and if you got any ideas on how I can do it better in the future, I'm all ears. Um, like I say, I don't necessarily think that shielding is something that you have to do to every guitar. It's not that big of a deal to me, but some guys just like to have it done like that. So, if you like the video, give us a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed yet, go ahead and click that subscribe button. If you appreciate content like this, you might want to go over to our Patreon page and consider becoming a member. Even a buck a month goes a long way to helping us bring you guys cool stuff like this. And if you can't do Patreon, we totally get it. Just share this as many places as you can on Insta, Google, Twitface, and that helps us grow the channel too. So, until next time, this is Matt at Texas Toast reminding you that if you're so smart, build it yourself. That's what I do. Thanks for watching, everybody. Hey everybody, I want to quickly amend this video. Um, Gary is here right now and he is off camera, um, but we have taken his guitar and put it through the amp and he's cool with the way it's, it's working now that we have shielded it versus the way it was when he brought it in. And he brought in, he was kind enough to bring in four guitars at, from his house that uh, are known to be quieter instruments than the others. And I said, let's take a look at what they did to shield those. So in my hand right here, I've got four instruments. I'm going to show you four very different ways that they have shielded these four very different guitars. So this is a, is this a Carvin or a Kiesel or how do they say it now? This is a, well, this is a Carvin DC-127. Okay, so this is, this is a Carvin DC-127. Now what they've done here is they've used copper shielding tape. And as you can see, um, the, uh, there, there's a ground wire coming off the bridge and it, it's soldered to the shielding um, right here. And um, I, you're gonna have to take my word for it that copper is conductive because I only have two hands and the, the table's covered with guitars. But, um, oh, Chris is gonna help me out here. So if you, you know, no, again. No, I got it. So again, take my word for it that metal is conductive. So <laughs> this is a great way to go. Uh, this carbon um, is, is well, it's, as you can see, it's got a big copper sheet in it, and it's, it's got a, a ground wire from the bridge attached to the shielding. Okay, we, here we have a Paul Reed Smith CE, and this one is also, Gary, Gary selected this one because it's quiet at his house. Now, dig this. See how the shielding in here, it doesn't quite look like uh, it's, it's all, you know, you can see wood under it. Um, so, and let me show you what, Eric, what it is nail. like. So you can, there, it, it does not conduct from one to the other, but 
you know, the pots, the ground, well, the ground should. There we go. Um, so the Paul Reed Smith works. Now, Chris thinks that might have a lot to do with this um, braided, shielded wire from the pickups. So it, it kind of looks like the Paul Reed Smith on the inside is for cosmetic reasons only, but maybe they're smarter than I am, which is probably very likely. And they figure that's all you need if you use this shielded wire. Okay, this is a really wild guitar. This is a Zerberus. Ne Zerbus? Zerberus. Zerberus Nemesis. It's got a rock for a top. Um, but this isn't about the Zerberus Nemesis It's about or the rock on the top. It's about the shielding. So you can see what they have done here is they've got a copper, a uh, piece of copper on the, 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 well, on the top, and then they've got shielding paint all around. Now, what we've discovered is that, of course, the copper uh, is conductive to itself, but the shielding paint, again, is not conductive to itself or to the copper. Now, um, again, maybe they know more about this than I do. Maybe it has something to do with, with whatever is hiding in these thick wires from the pickups here. But um, yeah, so this apparently works too. Again, maybe having shielding paint uh, that's all conductive is ain't that big of a deal. But um, oh, one other thing, this has a, um, an aluminum back plate. Now, uh, check this out, guys. Aluminum that has been anodized is still aluminum, but it is not necessarily conductive. So you see this? When you touch to the sides that have not been anodized, you get that beep, but you don't get it when you just do the face. But there is a patch back here I just noticed. No, nope. <laughs> that's just sort of, oh, no, I guess, yeah, so may, well, maybe this maybe this little little bit here of anodizing has been removed for some reason. All right, anyway. Moving right along, this is a warrior. Dran Michael. Dran Michael. That guy died recently, didn't he? Dran Michael Vincent. Oh, that was Mayor Wolf. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah. So this is a warrior guitar. Now warrior had. This was trippy to me. The back plate doesn't seem to make a big difference to warrior uh, in terms of shielding because it's it's it goes all the way through. See, um, but this is the only one that Gary brought over that um, the the shielding paint is in fact conductive all the way around. So um, and it's got a piece of uh, braided wire going to the jack, but not coming from the pickup. So, gosh, guys, there's a lot of stuff going on with uh, when it comes to shielding. Um, and I just don't know. So I'm interested, as like I was saying before, I'm interested in what you guys have to say uh, about your experiences with shielding. Now, if you don't actually have any experiences with shielding and you've just been on some forum, I guess you can waste my time, but you're wasting both of our times if you do that. If you actually have something that's worthwhile, go ahead and put it in the comments. If you just wanna tell me that I'm handsome, I appreciate that, put that down there too. Um, but if you don't actually have any experience except for forums, just tell me I'm handsome. How about that? Okay, happy meal for me.